Bob. Give me a live mic. Testing one, two, three, interview mic test. Testing one, two, three. This is an interview mic test, one, two, three. Did you get that? Good? Sound okay out there? You hear me? Give it you mean like this? Yep. Yes. Perfect. He's keep, he's pretty good. I mean, he keeps an eye on it. The um, yeah. Hey, Kevin, are you seeing this? How we look? I can't see the tight shot. We're okay. You're seeing this? Look all right. I'm trying to get Roy. All right, we still got a few minutes until North Carolina comes up. Uh, just a couple quick things. Once again, today's press conferences are being, uh, you can retrieve them a couple different ways. One is by FTP site. Uh, there are two different ways, ncaambb.hammondcg, H-A-M-M-O-N-D-C-G.com. At the prompt, username is lowercase ncaam2016, password is 2016, capital M, lowercase ncaa media. Uh, you can also go to FTP site ftp3.ftp to your site, so ftptoyoursite.com. Username, lowercase ncaam2016, password 2016, capital M, lowercase ncaa media. The port is 21. You can also go satellite coordinates. Satellite coordinates for today's press conferences, SES3, transponder 4A, downlink frequency 11766.5 vertical. Quick rundown of what's going to happen today. We'll have the Carolina player, uh, coach, and starters up here in just a few seconds. Uh, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Williams, and then we'll have questions for the five starters. Uh, we'll do that until about 3.05, at which point the, the uh, athletes will leave. They will head to the breakout rooms. If you don't know where the breakout rooms are, uh, they're actually out back, and then you're going to turn to the right. You'll see signage. Uh, it's a little bit of a walk from what I understand. I have not made it myself. Um, but they'll be up there uh, to give you to let you know which rooms each player will be in. Uh, room one will be Marcus Page. Room two will be Bryce Johnson. Room three will be Justin Jackson. Room four will be Kennedy Meeks, and room five will be Joel Berry the second. So we'll have the Carolina coach and athletes in just a few seconds. Once again, uh, if you have questions, obviously I'm now in a spot where I can't see some of you. Uh, just raise your hand. We have a couple of microphone holders. Uh, just ask that you give your name and outlet before you ask your question. And once again, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll go to athletes first. And then we'll get Coach after the athletes leave.
Thanks. Everything bad I say about Dan Gelson could go off public. All right, fellas, watch your knees as you take your seat. I almost made the joke last night. I was like, you know, you were only the second most injured coach yesterday. Who was the first? Brady. Well, that's what I heard. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, once again, uh, we will start with an opening statement from Coach Williams. Then we'll open it up to questions for the athletes. Uh, they'll be here until about 3.05, then go to their breakout rooms, at which time we'll start doing questions for <laughs> Coach. Uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you, uh, your name and your outlet for your question. So if we can start with, with Coach. We're ecstatic to be here, uh, getting ready to go out and have a little practice, trying to get ready for third round with uh, Notre Dame. Uh, we did some very good things last night. I wasn't pleased with our defense in the first half, but uh, uh, other than that, I thought we did some really good things, and it was a fantastic time to be a basketball coach when in the locker room last night with these guys. All right, we'll take questions for the student athletes at this time. Here in the third row at the end of the row. Jeff Gravely, WRAL. For Marcus and Bryce, just the preparing for Notre Dame the third time is an advantage having already played them twice and considering they were really two different games. Start with Marcus. Well, I mean, I would say it's an advantage, but they also have the advantage of playing us twice as well. So I think it kind of cancels, cancels out. I think it is better than not having played a team because you at least know what to expect and you know the athleticism and the size, and the shooting that they bring, uh, and you've played against it. So that's one thing we need to prepare for is how they space the floor and how good they are at getting in the lane and creating opportunities for their shooters. So, um, you know, it'll be a challenge, but having played them a couple times, I'm sure they feel comfortable with what we do, and I think we, we feel pretty comfortable with, with what they do. And Bryce? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely an advantage just because we can learn from both games. And, you know, the first time, we, were, we did play very well, but then we kind of let up on them. And then the second game, we actually kind of blew them out there at the, at the end of the first half. And I mean, we just got to learn from those mistakes in both of those games. I mean, we didn't play well defensively at some parts of each of those games. We'll go one row back at the end of the fourth row. Yeah, right here. Henry Bushnell, SB Nation. Marcus, uh, you said in your senior night speech that Coach often had a lot more confidence in you than you did in yourself. Is, was that more of a thing early in your career, or was it even a thing this year when you were going through some of your shooting struggles? Yeah, a lot of that was early in my career as a freshman, you know, kind of being thrown into the fire, having to play a lot of minutes early, um, where I, you know, not, wasn't necessarily prepared to be, a, you know, a high-level ACC guard right away. Um, but even, you know, throughout this year struggling, uh, I still had some confidence, but uh, I don't think his confidence in me ever wavered, and I think that helped me get through a lot of my issues. What kind of things did he do or some of the other assistant coaches do to sort of keep your confidence up and try to get it to the place that their confidence <coughs> was? Uh, they would just remind me that, you know, it didn't matter how many shots I missed, that they always thought the next one would go in and to not lose confidence in my shot and that they needed me to, you know, stay aggressive because it's important to this team. So those kind of things, uh, they go a long way when you're trying to get yourself going. And, you know, that's been able to happen these last couple of games. We'll go on the other side of the curtain here. We got couple in the front row here. Brett Friedlander, Wilmington Star News. Bryce, I think it was you at the ACC tournament who, who said that you thought that the turning point really was the second half of the Notre Dame game in, in South Bend. What did you guys learn from that, and what have you taken now to, you know, to, to get on this roll? Uh, first thing we've learned is that defense wins championships. I mean, we've really played well defensively, especially at the end of the first half and beginning of the second. And I mean, that's, that's basically what we learned mostly out of that game. We can't let up on them because they are a very good team and they will make runs during the game. And I mean, that's pretty much it. We'll stay here in the front row. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Greg Logan, Newsday for uh, Kennedy and, and Joel. Uh, <coughs> can you guys uh, please discuss your matchups with uh, Auguste and, and Jackson? And, and uh, Is his name Auguste? <laughs> I might have mispronounced it. Because if it is, I've been mispronouncing the damn thing for three years. <laughs> well, okay. Let's go with August. August. Okay. It's me. <laughs> Scare me uh, to death. I'd rather you mispronounce it than me. He can get back at me. He can't get back I've at you. <laughs> okay. But uh, can you guys discuss those matchups and also uh, the nature of that blowout and, and the level of confidence that you can take from that going into this game? Start with Joel and then go to Kennedy. 
Um, I just know Jackson is a great player. He's very explosive. Um, so we're just going to try uh, our best just to keep him out of the lane so he won't attack and um, either get all the way to the hole or try to kick out for the three-pointer. Um, that's what we want to do, and that's what I'm going to try to do, to just uh, try to stay in front of him. Um, I mean, uh, it was good to beat them like that, but you know, like uh, we said earlier, we only this is we beat them or they beat us three out of the last four. So uh, you know, we still got to give some little revenge uh, to them. So, Kennedy, Kennedy? Um, Zach is a great player. Um, he's very active. Uh, Coach McGrath mentioned this morning that um, he's averaging more rebounds than Bryce, and Bryce has been playing better than anybody else. I think. Um, so that's big for their team. Uh, my goal going into that game is to really lock down defensively and uh, really focus on that for the, for the entire game. And however long I play, is, is, it is what it is. I'm just going to try to give my best effort. All right, we'll go all the way over here on row three. Carolyn Payne, WRLSportsFan.com. I'll go with Joel and Marcus with this one. You just mentioned revenge. Um, how much do you anticipate Notre Dame coming out with something to prove after uh, you guys did what you did to them in the ACC tournament? And then, Marcus, you touched on their familiarity with you guys just as you are familiar with them. So uh, how much of an advantage is that for those guys? Start with Joel. Um, yeah, uh, we know they're going to come out aggressive, um, especially at this time of the year. Um, you know, you got to be the ones to uh, come out and attack first. So um, especially with the way we beat them, um, they're going to uh, come out pretty aggressive. But like I've been saying, you know, if we focus on uh, what we want to do and just focus on our, our <coughs> efforts and our defense intensity and all that stuff, uh, everything else will take care of itself. And Marcus? Oh, yeah, and then in terms of familiarity, like we, we know what worked and what hasn't worked against them, and they, they feel the same way. Obviously, they're going to try some different things uh, from the tournament, and I think we're going to try some different things just to you know, not give them the same look because it's easy to prepare for something you've seen a bunch of times. Um, but, yeah, I guess if I was them, I would try to use that ACC game. Like if that was us that got blown out, we would be talking about that nonstop up until the game, trying to get ourselves fired up. Uh, for revenge, and I'm sure they're feeling that way. Um, but at the same time, revenge can't be the only motivating factor in a game that gets you to the Final Four. You know, that's the biggest thing. Is this game is to go to the Final Four. I don't care what happened in the past, and I'm sure they don't either. This is a one-game opportunity to, to change your season. Any other questions? Okay, and here in the second row, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Marcus and Bryce, I think for a while people questioned the defensive fortitude of this team. And I'm just wondering how you guys kind of responded to that and, and just sort of how you grew into the defensive team that we're seeing these days. Start with Bryce and then we'll go to Marcus. Well, I mean, that's just the one thing Coach has been emphasizing all year. I mean, we, we haven't really been playing well defensively. We've just been score outscoring a lot of teams. And I mean, there was the one game we played against Maryland, we really played very well defensively. And I mean, Coach has always been emphasizing that we need to play like play every game like that. So, I mean, that's just the biggest thing. We've just been trying to just get better every game. And I mean, the last couple of games, we've really been doing pretty well. And Marcus? Yeah, we learned through our, you know, some of our losses this year that, you know, a lot of times we go back and review the tape and it's the lack of concentration and effort on defense that, it, that caused the other team to get the win. Uh, you know, it was never us not shooting the ball well or anything because we usually uh, get a lot of our points from the paint and, and do well in transition and stuff like that. So, and then coach, like I've been saying the past several weeks, coach has reminded us several times that he's never had a championship team that hasn't been great defensively. Uh, he said the 05 team was great defensively and then the 09 team kind of turned it up at the end of the year and was terrific on that end of the floor. And I think that hit home with us because that's where we want to be. That's where we want to get to. <clears throat> and if that's what we need to do to get there, then uh, I think that's why we've seen the change in our defense. I'll right, we'll go back to the end of row three over here. Yep. Uh, Jeff Gravely, WRL. This is a question for whoever had the most turnovers in the last two games against Notre Dame, and you guys can figure that out. The the, the, the role head of coach. <laughs> no. <laughs> the role of turnovers in this game. When you guys lost at Notre Dame, you had 13. <laughs> they had 19 points off turnovers, and then in the ACC tournament, you guys forced them into 17 turnovers. What does the role of turnovers play in this game tomorrow? Why don't we start with Justin, even though I don't know <laughs> who had the most turnovers. Justin's uh, a bright youngster. He'll yeah, handle it. Yeah. I guess. Uh-oh. Where's my chair? Where's my name at, though? <laughs> you guys don't have to put up with him this. I have to put up with him every daggum day. <laughs> Yeah, you're doing a nice job, Theo. Okay, I'll just go and check on. 
Yeah, I appreciate you. It's like I told you, I never have to congratulate him. He congratulates himself. I've been coaching 28 years. I've never had one freaking player to walk up in the middle of a damn press conference. <laughs> That's a guy that mimicked Coach Larry Fedora last night in the locker room. You guys want to see something funny, you ought to see that. All right, Justin, now that your classmate has screwed your whole thought process up. Um, I think the biggest thing, we took care of the ball a whole lot better in the second game. Um, you know, we were able to force them into a whole lot more turnovers, which got us out in transition, um, which is where we are at our best. Um, first game, I think they turned the ball over twice. So when we can't get them to turn the ball over, they got a whole lot of offensive rebounds, which made us not be able to get out in transition as well. So I think that's the whole thing. Whenever we can force them into one shot and get out in transition, that's whenever we're at our best. OK, let's go back over here on this side in the front row. Justin, when uh, when Marcus gets started the way he did yesterday, how much do the rest of you guys feed off of that? Because uh, I think you made, as a team, the first six or seven three-pointers. Uh, is there kind of a, a contagious effect to that? I mean, yeah. I mean, whenever somebody comes out like that on your team, um, I mean, you just got to pick your game up even more. Um, I mean, the amount of confidence that he had, I think he hit his first four and then oh, hit a jump shot at the at the free throw line. So whenever you see that, I mean, you just kind of you feel like you have to pick it up. Um, so it was great to see him play like that. Um, I mean, it's what we're used to him doing. So at the end of the day, we, we need him to do that. All right, do we have any more questions for the student athletes at this time? Anybody have any questions for Theo? We'll send him back up here. <laughs> okay, so the so the student athletes, you guys are dismissed. You're going to go up to breakout rooms, uh, just so everyone knows from media. Uh, room number one will be Marcus Page. Room number two, Bryce Johnson. Room number three, Justin Jackson. Room number four, Kennedy Meeks. Room number five, Joel Barry the second. So yeah, it's just out the back way, and you'll go. You'll turn to the right, and it's a little bit of a walk. So. Get these guys off. OK, uh, questions for Coach Williams. We have a couple of people raising their hands. We'll start in the second row here. Hey, Roy, Andrew Carter. I think you went to this level of the tournament six out of the first nine years uh, at UNC. It's been a bit now. Do you have a greater appreciation for reaching this point? I had a greater appreciation for it my second year at Kansas. Uh, you know, because uh, the first year we didn't get a chance to play in the tournament because of problems that had happened before I got there. And I've always appreciated every single day in the NCAA tournament that with each level you go, the stakes get a little higher, you get a little more excitement, a little more uh, intensity level in your practices, a little more attention from the players. Uh, yesterday was one of the worst, best days I've ever had. You know, the uh, late, late starting time. I watched three tapes of Indiana during the day. You know, I mean, that's a little bit overwhelming because there's only so much you can learn, but you're sitting there and you think you're stupid if you watch the same thing over again, but you don't want to leave any stone unturned kind of thing. So there's, uh, uh, with each level to go, is the excitement level, I think, with the kids is the thing I notice the most. We'll stay in the second row with Jonathan. Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. It's playing a team for the third time in a season. It's happened fairly often for you. Are there things in common across the time, or is it just a matter of each team presents its own challenges? Well, each team does prevent its, present its own challenges, and each team changes from one week, one game, you know, one month to the next. Uh, uh, we go up to South Bend, and uh, they kicked our tails. And they were more aggressive, greater intensity, greater effort, uh, more concentration. And then we get them in the tournament, and it, it flipped. And, uh, you know, both teams are familiar with each other. I don't think there's any advantage either way because it's the same for both teams. You know, if I had a spy inside the Notre Dame office that told me what they didn't practice every day, that'd be an advantage. But we played two games out in the middle of God and everybody, and so it's the same thing. And uh, uh, it, what's going to happen, and the biggest uh, factor in tomorrow's game is who's going to play the best tomorrow and who's going to have the concentration and the focus. We'll go here, end of row one, and then we'll go back to you, Josh. Okay. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, USA Today. Roy, so much talk about the ACC and how well the league is performing, guaranteed a spot in the title game. Do, do you are you one of the people who do measure like league relative strength by NCAA tournament performance? It depends on which you know side of the fence I'm on. Yeah, I think it's the best choice right now. But uh, 
You know, the reality is there's a lot of good teams. There's a lot of good leagues. I happen to think the ACC is the best league from top to bottom, the depth that we have. I mean, Boston College didn't win a game. They almost got us, and they had State at State by one with less than a two seconds to play. Uh, the top part of this league has just been – I shouldn't say top part. I'll say top half of the league was just off the charts this year. Um, there are other good leagues. How you evaluate it, there's only one way that you can really evaluate it, and that's if you have personal competition from one league with the other or the NCAA tournament. Uh, the Big Ten, I think uh, – ACC Challenge, we as an ACC won it like 10 years in a row, and I think they've won it the last four or five years. Uh, but uh, uh, so that's one way to measure it, and any other way is the NCAA tournament play, and we've done pretty well this year. All right, we'll go middle of row four. Josh, just raise your <coughs> hand real quick so we can see you. Go ahead. Uh, Josh Newman, Asbury Park Press. I know for the Carolina family it's been a difficult year with the passing of Coach Smith, the passing of uh, Coach, Coach Gutheridge. At this point in the season, as someone who was very close to them and, you know, they were – uh, some mentors to you, obviously. Do you find yourself thinking more about them or the lessons that they taught you? I, there's not a day goes by that I don't think the lessons I learned from Coach Smith doesn't come up in my mind. And Coach Guthridge to some degree, too. I mean, Coach Guthridge, it was even a different relationship because 1968-69 school year, I played on the freshman team at North Carolina, and he was my coach. And so those two guys uh, in basketball, to me, uh, there's not a day goes by. But with those two, there's not a day goes by that I don't think of some other things they taught me. My high school coach, Buddy Baldwin, is a great mentor, still is. Uh, coach Smith, Coach Guthridge, and I stole a lot of things from Coach Bob Knight. He was great to me. Coach John Thompson, Jerry Tarkani, and all those guys have been great influences on me. But Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge, I think about those guys every day. We'll go one row back into row five. Go ahead. Bryce is closing in on the single season rebound record at Carolina. What has allowed him to just have that success on the glass this year? He's always been a good rebounder. At times, he's been a great rebounder. He rebounds in his area really well, and sometimes he can go and get it outside of his area. There's times that he uh, uh, can get a guy that's fairly close and get a body on him and box him out. He gets to the unbelievable stage. That's where he falls down sometimes because he doesn't put a body on him and, and get it. But uh, one of the top uh, two or three rebounders I've ever coached in 28 years, the quick jump, the being willing to go after the ball, and the pride that he takes in rebounding the basketball, I think all of those uh, are important to him, and not just a quick jump, but how high he jumps too. We'll come up two rows at the end of row three. Hey, Coach, Jeff Gravely, WRL. With the top half of the league off the charts, and the fact that we have four in the final eight, what does it say about your team that you were able to win the regular season and the tournament? Well, I'm really proud of what we've done. And I think doing that in the ACC is something that we'll be even more proud of as time goes along because I do believe it was the best league in basketball this year. And uh, uh, I think it'll stand the t test of time. When we first went to 15 teams, you take the first uh, 10 or 15 years, I think it'll surpass anything in any other league has ever done. But, no, it's, it, it, it's a feeling of pride for us. There's no question about that. We'll stay in row three over there, Adam. Yeah, uh, Adam Kilgore, The Washington Post. Um, how, how much have you watched the, the tape from the ACC tournament against Notre Dame? Like, like, what have you taken out of it? And is there a psychological challenge um, to, you know, to, to get your players to take out what they need to take out without sort of having them take for granted uh, similar outcomes because it was so recent and because it was such a big – you know, well, the second part of your question is really a good question. First part, how much have I done? Hell, I got home at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, so we haven't done a lot of tape watching today. I watched uh, uh, tape of their game last night. This is one of the only thing I've watched. I haven't watched our tape against them yet. You know, it is a challenge. You try to watch the tape. You try to pick out some things that you say, hey, we've got to do that better because it's really important. Uh, if it's not important, don't worry with it. You know, if it's out of your control, don't worry with it. I set up in a, some kind of room like this in 1991 before half of you guys were even born. And they said, do you think it's your lack of free throw shooting is going to catch up with you? Because at that time, there were 64 teams in the tournament, and University of Kansas was 64th. I said, well, you know, there's only two teams left playing, so we got those other 62 suckers without shooting free throws very well. But what you do is figure out what's important and what has a major outcome, a factor in the outcome of the game. So when I'm looking at that tape, I'm going to say, well, that was because things were going really good for us. That was because it was really going bad for them. That's not going to be part of the game tomorrow. 
and then I'll try to look and see, okay, now we've got to be careful because that's going to be a big factor in the game. And I'm sure that Michael will be doing the same kind of thing. We'll look at the tape, uh, look at all the stats, front, backwards, upside down, and everything you possibly can because you don't want to leave any stones unturned, as I said earlier. But the game is going to be played and won, not just played, but it's won tomorrow. All the other stuff in the past. Um, you know, we talked about revenge a little bit. In 2012, we had a really good team. If Kendall Marshall and John Henson don't get hurt at the end of the season, I think we had the best team. I've told Cal that. I'd like to have played them on Monday night. They beat us at uh, Kentucky by one when Anthony Davis blocked John Henson's shot. So we were really good. If I'm not mistaken, we got beat at Florida State that year by 33. I wrote the number 33 up on the board. It stayed up there from the day we played Florida State until the day our season was over with. We played Florida State in the finals of the ACC tournament that year, and they still beat our butts. You know, so you can't just get caught up and think that that's going to do everything. Uh, we've got to prepare and say, again, what's most important. If – I'll use Indiana as an example. If three-point shooting is the most important, we've got to try to do a great job against them. But if that's going to be the most important, that's going to be a negative for us. So we try to do everything we could to make the inside game, the rebounding, be the most important. Try to make sure we outscored them in the paint. So you're always playing little games like that. And you know what? Sometimes you hit one right and sometimes you screw it up and it has nothing to do with the game. So that's – but still, it's what we do. All right, we got a couple up here front over here. Roy, have you had a chance to talk to Jared since uh, he got hired at Stanford? And much like you were talking about how Coach Smith and Coach, Gu Coach Guthridge were your influences and mentors, do you have a sense that some younger coaches like Jared look that way at you? I've talked to Jared several times this week, and uh, he's uh, sensational. I'm extremely happy for him. Uh, um, and, yes, he's – been one of those kind of youngsters that says great things and say says that uh, I mean more to him than it really does. He knows I'm getting old, wants me to feel better, that kind of thing. But uh, we've had some great conversations. I talked to the athletic director at Stanford. Uh, we had some great conversations, and I'm really, really pleased for him. But I feel fortunate. I'm watching Mark Turgeon play, or his team play, and I get fired up just watching him. And Turd sent me a note one time and said, Coach, this is hard. You, you always made it look so easy. And I said, you know, that's not true. Uh, but uh, I feel very fortunate to have some great youngsters and some of them not as young anymore, but uh, the guys that played and coached with us that are doing well. We'll go with the other end of row one here. Roy, Jaden Daly, Daly Dosa Hoops. With the 09 tour championship team, there was a refuse-to-lose mentality that Tyler had that <clears throat> really was contagious to his teammates on the floor. Through this tournament, especially with last night, do you see a similar quality in Marcus? Marcus has those great leadership qualities, and he can say it verbally and do it. Tyler Hansbro just led by example. Because yeah, when he said something, everybody shut up and listened. But he didn't do that very often. He just played. But that team, Tyler carried us for a couple of years. But that year itself, Tyler carried us, carried us, and then he had a little bit less and a little bit less. And at the tournament, you know, I mean, Wayne Ellington, Ty Lawson, Danny Green, all those guys really jumped right in. And we were, uh, regardless of what people say, we were a great three-point shooting team. And uh, they carried the load for us. Tyler scored 17 points in the national championship game. And uh, Wayne scored 17 in the first half, I think it was. But uh, those guys, Tyler particularly, and to a lesser degree, Wayne and Danny and Ty, they sort of adopted – Tyler's thing, he came back just to win a national championship. That's the only reason he came back. He loved college, but he wanted to have one more chance to win a national championship. So those guys sort of fell in line, but they got we got so much better during the course of the season. And, and then at the end of the year, we really locked down people defensively. So that was just an extremely talented team, much less the motivation that they had. All right, we'll go all the way in the back, uh, Shannon, at the end of the row. And then we'll go, we'll go to you, Luke, after that. Substitute Luke. Ladies first. Oh, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Ryan, Chicago Tribune. Roy, um, what were your expectations of Notre Dame when they joined the league, and have they surpassed that? And um, maybe a second thing to that is just with them being in a back-to-back -back Elite Eight, uh, should they have a, a higher national profile or reputation than what they do? Uh, you know, I guess it depends on what you thought of before. I thought they were pretty doggone good before. You know, they had – uh, gosh, I don't think I'm wrong. I hadn't. I think they had had a pretty significant run the last couple of years in the Big East. I mean, that their program was at the highest level, and so my expectations were that they would continue to do that and would 
to make the ACC even more competitive, another big-time team that had a chance to win national championships and play on the major level and uh, uh, on the, in the major picture all the time. So I didn't have that big a difference. Now, if somebody had uh, lesser opinion of them to start with, you know, then they could really change. But I've always thought that they've been uh, really a big-time program anyway. And even going back when I was an assistant and Digger was there, but I think uh, – uh, Mike has just really done a great job, and I happen to like Mike a lot, so it's easy to easy to say those kind of things too. All right, we'll come up two more rows, and Luke, uh, Luke DiCacro, News and Observer. Uh, none of the players have mentioned not the Virginia loss, but really the film session after the Virginia loss is the, the kind of wake up call for them. Do you remember going into there and, and kind of going through that film session? Was there anything unusual you remember about that, or their reaction to it? Uh, no, I remember it. There's no question. There's been three or four times this year that we've sat them down and had everybody watch every single play the entire game. And I think the uh, effort, the intensity that Virginia played with and the precision, you know, the, the, um, the execution, not just the effort, the execution of what they did. I still remember uh, – Gosh, I think it was Wilkins, the sprint back that he did and when Malcolm made this great play and knocked a pass away that we'd thrown about three-quarters of the court. And Malcolm made a great play, whom I can't be a bigger fan of Malcolm Brogdon than me. But I showed them the Wilkins kid who sprinted from under the goal when he was right there if Malcolm hadn't knocked it away. So we talked about that a great deal and said this is the team that's won the last two ACC championships, the regular season championships two years in a row. That's what you have to do. And you have to do it not just at home, you have to do it on the road as well. And with each and every loss this year, I think our team's learned a lot. Uh, uh, but I think the way that we came back after the Virginia game, and as I said the other day, play Syracuse in a very emotional senior day and then play Duke at Duke, I think that uh, uh, we did gain a lot from that film session that day. All right, we'll come over on this side of the curtain in row three. Go ahead. Art. Our chance to get WCHL radio. Roy, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned 1991, and then to feed off your answer to Andrew's question, I've heard over the last few days coaches say that the most pressure is on the final eight game because you have to win it to get to the, mm -hmm. the promised land. Now, you've, <coughs> you've been there seven times. You've been in so many of these games. Is the pressure in this game more – pronounced for you and the team that you feel or have you been there so many times it's just another big game well it's 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 another big game and I'm glad I've been in a lot of art but I really you know who knows what I'm gonna feel like tomorrow yesterday I felt about as much pressure as I've ever felt and then going back I felt that same way you know before we played Providence so I think it is just uh, perhaps it gets a little bit more I've never taken away the uh uh, the difference between Sweet 16 and Elite 8. And I've heard a lot of people say that that's the, that's the most pressure trying to get in. Um, I've always thought that uh, the most pressure is trying to win the, na win the championship. I've been there uh, twice and lost in the championship game. And uh, there was a heck of a lot of pressure because the feeling that I had was drastically different from what Jimmy Beheim and Mike Krzyzewski had. So that was where, to me, it's, it's the difference. Um, yeah, the, the everybody talks about their Final Four teams. You can talk to anybody at Kansas, and they'll say, we went to the Final Four in 71, 74, 91, 93. You know, they remember the Final Four years. So it does get a lot of uh, attention. But uh, I, from a coaching perspective, uh, I don't think I'll feel any more stress. I hope the heck I don't feel any more stress tomorrow than I did yesterday. Uh, you know, the game's an hour earlier, so maybe that will take away some of it. But uh, – I understand the question, and there is a drastic difference because, again, it wouldn't take me very long. I could sit here and I could name you every Final Four team that North Carolina had since uh, 67. It, I don't think I'd miss it. We'll come back over on this side in row two. Roy, you referenced the 2012 team that came close and had the injuries and didn't make it. And obviously it's been a difficult time for you and your program the past several years. Would a win tomorrow provide some sense of vindication for you or, or kind of – would it mean more for you? Not a vindication. I mean, the, the attacks have been uh, not that old Roy can't coach a lick. The attacks have been in the other areas kind of thing. And I think coaching is getting your kids to do what you want them to do it and, and try to do it more than the other coach does, you know, gets his players to do what they want to, he wants them to do. But uh, vindication, it's uh, I'm never going to get over this junk. Uh, so 
but it's been my salvation the time that I've been able to go out on the basketball court and uh, uh, moments like in the locker room last night. I can assure you I didn't think about any of that other stuff in the locker room last night. So it's just great feelings and great times. We'll stay here at the end of row two. Uh, Zach Schoenbrun, New York Times. Roy, um, you, you've been putting numbers on the whiteboard again this season. The, what's the significance or the symbolism behind those numbers you put in the box that are on the whiteboard after games? And why did you start doing that? I started doing it in 1991, and we made it all with the national championship game. I've done it ever since. And uh, I'm corny, but the significance is pretty easy. You know, if you write a 32, that means there's still 30 teams, two teams playing and you're, you're one of them. And if you write 16 up, it's there's 16 teams still playing and you're one of them. I guess that means we should keep y'all's butts out of the locker room so I didn't have to answer these questions because that's something that we should be able to keep to ourselves. It's one of the things I despise about what's going on now. You can't have anything personal and private to your team. But uh, we'll go behind the shed and do some different things just to see if we can keep something away from you guys. We'll go here in the front row at the end of row one. Coach, the last time this program was in this situation, you were forced to play a, a guard, Stillman. And we just talked to him. And he said, I had no clue what to expect, had no clue how I was going to play, and I was petrified. Mm -hmm. Recall that and how you guys went into that and tried to, you know, put up a good showing against Kansas. Well, you know, we played the game before without him, without Kendall. And Stillman started, and I just threw on a blank. Is either Ohio University or Miami of Ohio, I forget who it was. But that's bad for my brain, I guess. But uh, And it really, really went down to the last play of the game, that game. And uh, so he, he had the one game under his belt that he was that he was dead it, but uh, he was petrified, and so was I. <laughs> you know, it was a mutual feeling kind of thing. But he really did some nice things. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he had five assists, zero turnovers. I told him the biggest thing to do is don't hurt us. But the fact of the matter is, if you're playing an elite team like Kansas to go to the Final Four, just going in the game and not hurting your team is not enough because the difference between winning and losing is so small. If you have a Kendall Marshall who doesn't really hurt you but also makes so many plays for everybody else, you know, you're better. And I said at that point that if we had won that game, that could have been one of the truly great score stories. Here's Stillman White that nobody had ever heard of, and he's starting and playing 40 minutes. And what was he just as bad as his backup was Justin Watts, who had never played the point guard in his life. And when he got in most games, he was the backup four-man. And so then it, we put, brought him back there as a the point guard. But uh, Stillman, and the good thing is this last week or so, I mean, we let Stillman be Yogi the last couple of days in practice, and he ripped those guys a new one. I'm telling you, he made every shot right in Joel's face, Marcus's face, Nate's face. And he's gotten a lot better. And if he continues, he's going to play a lot of basketball for us next year. Okay, do we have any more questions for Coach? Okay. okay. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for moving that leg. Yeah, I got Sorry. you. Got it over where Bryce could hit it. <laughs> All right, we will have uh, an athletes at 3.40. 3.40 p.m. I have 3.23 on my clock.
just a couple of notes. There we go. Um, probably have some new people for these for this group. Uh, you guys can pick up the satellite coordinates. Uh, you can also get the press conferences on an FTP site to be used from there. Uh, FTP information is uh, you can go to ncaamb.hammondcg, H-A-M-M-O-N-D-C-G.com. Uh, at the prompt, username is lowercase ncaam2016, password is 2016, capital M, lowercase ncaa media. Uh, the FTP site is FTP3 dot FTP to your site, uh, FTP, T-O-Y-O-U-R-S-I-T-E dot com. Username, lowercase N-C-A-A-M, 2016. Password, 2016, M, capital M, lowercase N-C-A-A media. Uh, the port is 21. Satellite coordinates for this press conference, SES3. Transponder 4A, downlink frequency is 11766.5 vertical. So that's how you can capture today's uh, press conferences for TV. What we'll do once Notre Dame gets here, we'll have Coach Bray and players up here together. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach Bray. Then we'll have questions for the student athletes. Uh, we will be dismissing them at about 3.55, uh, and they will go to their breakout rooms. If you haven't been to the breakout rooms, if you go out back of this and you turn to the right and you keep walking. I actually haven't been there either myself. Someone far. is far. I've been told that. Um, up in the breakout rooms, uh, room one will be Steve Vistoria. Room two, Demetrius Jackson. Room three, V.J. Beecham. Room four, Zach August. And room five will be Matt Farrell. Once again, when you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone. We have two microphone holders. They will come over. You just need to give your name and your outlet before you ask your question. No, that's okay. Steps, right? We're all right. <laughs> okay. All right, so once again, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Bray. Then we'll have questions for the student athletes. We'll dismiss them in 10 to 12 minutes, and then we'll do – they'll go to the breakout rooms, and we'll have questions for Coach Bray here. So, Coach? <clears throat> We're thrilled to be back in this position again a year later, you know, with a chance to go to a Final Four. We know we play uh, – a team that I think is playing the best in the country right now. Well, they seem to have put it all together. Uh, and we certainly saw it up close and personal in Washington, D.C. in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. But um, I love our group. I love our will to win. Um, you know, we have found ways to continually make things interesting, and we're excited about the challenge tomorrow. All right, this time we'll take questions for the student athletes. Once again, we have microphone holders. Uh, just give your name and your outlet before you ask your question. Do we have any questions for the student athletes? All right, we'll come up here in row two. Go. Yep. 
Uh, Carlos Colazzo, Daily Tar Heel. This is for anyone. Uh, what is it like for you guys to be playing UNC at this point after you've seen them in the regular season and then the ACC tournament? Why don't we start with Demetrius and then we'll go with Zach on that one. Um, I think uh, it's really good. Um, we played we played this team before in my career here. We played them a bunch of times, so I'm um, seeing some of the same faces. And uh, they got a great team, so it's going to be a great challenge for us, and we're really looking forward to it. And Zach? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we're looking forward to playing them again um, and uh, kind of finishing business. Last time we weren't able to get the win versus them, so, you know, we're looking to have some unfinished business. Okay, and uh, just behind him in row three, uh, Adam? Yeah, hey, Adam Zagoria, SMI for Demetrius and Zach. Um, you know, last year Duke won this tournament with three one and duns. This year it's a lot of veteran guys. You guys, Bryce Johnson, Michael Gabinage, all these veteran guys on the ACC teams. What does that say about your teams in the ACC this year versus Duke with the one and duns last year? And did you guys ever wish you were one and done? Would that have been your ideal goal coming into college? Start with Demetrius. Uh, I'm really ha uh, thankful to be in the position I am. Um, you know, junior now. We got some older guys, and so I've um, been with this group for a while, and um, we've just kind of grown together. And uh, we just try to get better every single year. Try to get better every single game, every single practice. And so it's been it's been a joy to uh, just uh, continually just get better and have fun doing it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think I agree with uh, Demetrius as well. It's been a blessing. Um, and you know, honestly, being here. Uh, and having four years under my belt uh, has definitely helped me mature and grow as a man and as a basketball player, um, especially, you know, handling stuff both on and off the court. So um, I'm thankful for the position I'm in. Over here on the other side of the curtain here in first row, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. For Steve and Zach, a lot of people talked about the last time you played Carolina, obviously, in the ACC tournament and whether it's revenge. How do you kind of <coughs> take that game and, and use it going forward or ignore it going forward? Start with Steve. Yeah, I think we can, you know, learn a lot of things from that game. Um, like Coach said, you know, they're playing at a really high level right now. But I think we are as well. So, you know, especially with one day to get ready for them, you know, we're so familiar with what they do and, and they know what we do. So uh, I think mainly for us just going out there and, and focusing on what we do best and, and, you know, playing with nothing to lose and, you know, and, you know that should be good enough for us. And Zach? Yeah, definitely just using that uh, as motivation what happened last time um, and just trying to focus in on getting this big win. Okay, uh, at the end of row two over here, Jonathan, we'll just wait for a microphone. This is to Steve and then to Demetrius. I'm sure there's almost next to nothing at this point that you guys don't know about this North Carolina team, but when they shoot from the perimeter the way that they did against Indiana and get that many points on the scoreboard, does it at all change how you guys get ready for them? Start with Steve. Um, yeah, that makes them, you know, even more difficult to guard. You know, everybody knows how, how hard they are to defend in the post. You know, they got a lot of big bodies, but, you know, they can shoot the ball as well. So it's going to be a challenge for us to, you know, keep them off the glass and out of the paint, but also challenge contested jump shots. And, uh, you know, I think we're capable of doing that. And, and as long as we can contest shots and uh, keep them off the glass, you know, we should be in pretty good position. Demetrius? Yeah, as um, one of our assistant coaches says, um, you got to do both. So, you know, you got to guard the three point line, you got to guard on the side, you got to keep guys from going off the dribble. Um, you just got to play defense. And so um, it's really going to come down to effort, heart, um, hustle, getting on the floor, flying around for loose balls, and just really going for it. Okay, any more questions for the student athlete? Yep, here at the end of row two. This is for uh, Matt and VJ. Um, last night when Coach hurt himself, did you notice that? And, and uh, you know, uh, what, what is your reaction to that, that he's going to play in pain there at the end uh, and, and get you through to the end? Start with VJ. Uh, no, we didn't really notice it until after the game, uh, right before, you know, we came in here for the media session. But uh, it just speaks to our team toughness, you know, just him being <laughs> our coach, uh, just fighting you're, through the you're toughness. You're starting. <laughs> 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 and Matt? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it at first. Um, I think everybody thought it happened when uh, we were all jumping on him after the game. But um, I know on the bench with about 13 seconds left, I saw him limping a little bit. I don't know if he was tired or whatnot. But you know, just like VJ said, you know, we we have fun with each other. It shows uh, our toughness, and uh, we're just enjoying it right now. Okay. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay, we'll dismiss them. They're going to head up to the breakout session. Once again, uh, room one, Steve Vistoria. Room two, Demetrius Jackson. Room three, B.J. Beecham. Room four, Zach August. 
in room five, Matt Farrell. Again, you'd be going out the back, and then it's off to the right, and it's a little bit of a walk. So luckily, Coach does not have to go to the breakout sessions. <laughs> uh, we will take questions for Coach Bray. We'll start with Dana here in row one. That film from the uh, tournament game, do you watch it? Do you burn it? Is it an aberration? I've misplaced that. That has been misplaced. Yeah, those are those are ones you burn. You don't go back to. Um, but, you know, yeah, certainly you, you have to learn from it, and we've talked about it a little bit here in practice. We just were not very good with the basketball. Um, a team that we were a team that has been really good with the ball throughout the year. Um, but that game – uh, we were not, and and you give Carolina credit. I think they've stepped up their defense. The, it was hard to make a pass, the way they contested passing lanes, and we're going to have to be better uh, finding people. I'm hoping Matt Farrell in the lineup to start the game helps us because we have another ball handler on the floor. We didn't start that way in Washington D.C., and that's kind of helped in taking a little pressure off of Demetrius that we have another ball handler on the floor to start a game. We'll say uh, in row one here at the end, Ock. Uh, Jamal Connell, AP. Mike, what were you doing in 1978, and how often has Digger reminded you that he got him to the Final Four in yeah. 1978? Uh, my big brother, Digger, reminds me uh, – he'll remind me uh, weekly, you know, what happened there. Um, 78, uh, I was a freshman at Northwestern Louisiana. I just left Morgan Wooten, but certainly remember watching those Notre Dame teams. And Coach has become a good friend. He's, you know, he's still there. He's got more time on his hands now that he's not doing TV. So he's around practice. And the one thing I like about him is, you know, I mean, he he is the one guy around there that sat in the same seat. So I can have some conversations with him, and uh, he can relate to some of the things you're going through. We'll stay on this side in row two uh, to Mike. Mike Jensen, Philadelphia Inquirer. Mike. Uh, Roy Williams pointed out you had success at Notre Dame before you joined the ACC, but can, can you figure out if being in the ACC has been any, any factor at all in these postseason runs? Yeah, I think it's helped us. Um, you know, personally, I've been excited about coaching in the ACC. Now, I love the Big East, and we had a heck of an uh, identity in that league uh, consistently. But growing up in Rockville, Maryland, uh, watching left your Zell's teams. I grew up an ACC guy, certainly coached in the league as an assistant. So for me, it, it, it was really, I tell people this all the time, this is how crazy expansion was, is, or, or was. If you ended up coaching at Maryland, you'd be in the Big Ten now. I stayed at Notre Dame, I'm coaching in the ACC. And I, that's crazy, but it's awesome because, uh, you know, I certainly – like going back through the southeast it, it's definitely helped our recruiting um certainly when you get to play duke in north carolina regularly um you got to play them first to have a chance of beating them you got to have them on the schedule fortunately we've been pretty good against them lately and it's given us unbelievable credibility not only in the league but nationally and i think it's given us confidence then to do the stuff we've done the last two years all right, we'll go to the other side of the room. Uh, Shannon in row four. Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. You talked the other day about seeing a ranking where you guys were ranked 16th out of 16 teams here. and We're ranked ninth of the final eight. But I <laughs> – okay, I, I, I thought I saw that. But we're still the toughest team left. We're the toughest team <laughs> left in this thing. But I think we'll be picked ninth. So do you think – I mean, that sounds like that. Uh, <laughs> from this, that you all agree that Notre Dame's often – overlooked as a basketball program and w why do you think that is and do you think you need to get to the final four to earn that national recognition well we have a quarterback controversy going on right now in South Bend so you know I mean my gosh people may be tuned in a little bit tomorrow night um you know I think we've had a great basketball identity we we really have um we always were consistent in the big east but you know we never made the deep run we had one sweet 16 the last two years, I think, has given us great credibility. I think in the basketball world, um, I firmly believe this in the basketball community, I don't think there's a program more respected than our program. No program. How we've done it, how we've gotten guys better, how we've built it, our style of play, and I'm really proud of that. We'll move up one row to Adam. Uh, Adam Kilgore, The Washington Post. Um, what to, to, to follow up on uh, Dana's question, um, what's the, the psychological attack you'll take with your team in regard to that ACC game against Carolina? Do you ignore it? Do you, do you address it? 
do you remind them that they've drawn three times? Yeah, drawn an analogy of, you know, last year Duke beat us by 30 in Cameron, and we turned around and beat them in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. I've kind of used that analogy a little bit. Um, And these guys have been, you know, they're they're really – I mean, you know, they're really tough and resilient. I think they'll – They'll move on, and, you know, as a coach, I just want to try and help them a little bit more, make some passes. That's on me to help get us in a little better position offensively. We'll stay in row three. We'll come to the other Adam in row three. Mike, SMI, Adam Zagoria, how are you? How you doing, Adam? Um, Two of the four ACC teams used to be in the Big East, to follow on Mike's question. Last time, four teams from one league were in the Elite Eight was the Big East in 09. Did you and Syracuse bring something to this league that it didn't have before, and how would you compare this year to that 09 Big East run? Well, I thought at Media Day in Charlotte, <clears throat> and as when I was asked about that, I thought this had the feel of those years in the Big East, especially 09 when we were getting 8, 9, and one year we got 11. I really felt it had that. And not only you know Syracuse, but Pitt, Louisville, Syracuse, Notre Dame, I think has added great – you know, great depth and power to the league. You know, it, it's um, it, it, the great thing about I, – I used to say this about the Big East and now say it. The good news is, you know, the good news is you're you're in the Big East or that you're in the ACC. The bad news is you're – but you always have power games there, resume games. They're always there. And you don't have to get them all. You get the right ones. Get that thing to about 10 and 8. Let's get half the league in. That's why, you know, it was, uh, you know, when I was in the Big East, there's, oh, my God, you're in the Big East. Well, 4th of July, when I'm at my beach house down the road here in Rehoboth, I can say, wait, if I get to the top nine, I'm in? Okay, I, my sanity is pretty good then in the summer. But the ACC, my first two years, we only got six bids. Now, you know, fortunately, one of the years we got them, I'm thinking, if we're only going to get six bids, I may be back at Delaware. You know, so I love that we have set a tone for depth like the Big East, Adam. I will right, we'll stay in row three at the very end of the row here. Henry Bushnell from SB Nation. Um, Coach, you've had a remarkably efficient offense really ever since you got to Notre Dame and a consistent offense too, like consistently good. Yeah. How is your, in your view, how has your offense changed over the years? Like how, how much different is it now than when you first got? To well, we've always hung our hat on assist to turnover and taking care of the ball. That's why our rash of turnovers a little bit lately has kind of bothered me and um, but we've always been good there. We've recruited guys with a high basketball IQ. They're good with the ball. Our big guys are good with the ball. And so you can play with unpredictable movement. You can flow. You don't have to run a pattern. And I think guys get better in that situation as they grow. This team is different than all the other teams I've had is because when we play Colson and August together, we're more powerful up front than we've been. We've always usually had one big and a stretch four, and maybe we haven't been the most physical group in the paint at times. But Bonzi and Zach together, they had 20 offensive rebounds against North Carolina and South Bend, and we're going to need them to be really good tomorrow night. Is it more like a player-driven system, or is it more about the actual system? Well, I, no, I think it's player-driven. You know, you kind of you kind of tweak it to what you have, and um, you know, we've always had guys that can make shots, so your spacing is going to be good. You know, we've always been able to stretch the floor. You can talk about spacing, but you have, you have guys out there that can't make a shot. No one guards them, and the lane's jammed up. So we've always had enough threats on the floor, so the floor is open and you have good spacing if you have a post guy, Heron Gody, Zach August, Bonzi, to go to work. Or you have what we've had, you know, Demetrius and then Jaron Grant, guys that can slice and slash, too. But you got to have some shooters so that floor is open and they respect them. All right, we'll go in the fourth row. We'll start at the end of the row and then next to him. Hey, Mike, Jeff Gravely, WREL. Uh, this is not your father's ACC when you were an assistant at Duke. Uh, as Coach Floyd Williams just said, the top half of this league this year has been off the charts. What does it say about North Carolina? They've been able to navigate, win the regular season and the tournament. Yeah, I think it shows um, – the power that they have, and they're old. And, you know, it's funny. So many people talked about you were in this position last year and you're playing Kentucky. Kentucky was young. You know, Kentucky was young. I, I, always, I, was, I always felt good about that one. This one worries me more because they're men. They've been together a while and they played, and they really have played like veterans. Different guys have stepped up. I think the key has been their defense, you know. And, and I think it started shortly after the game in South Bend. Uh, I hear 
their kids talk and I, I hear coach talk, it's kind of been then where they got after it defensively, and it sure has. Uh, but if you can win both in this league this year, my hat's off to you. We'll stay in row four. Mike Vicara, New York Post. Mike, um, you referenced Coach Wooten earlier. You were around him, obviously, as a player, as a young coach. What did that? What, what has that done to shape who you are as a coach all these years later? You know, he, he's just the ultimate educator and teacher, and I was so blessed to be play for him. I was at his camp when I was 10 years old. I was around him, then go back and coach with him right when I left GW. Um, you know, I still draw on the stuff I learned as a high school coach and a high school assistant and even a classroom history teacher there. You know, the, the relationships with players, getting to know them. Um, he, was a, he was such a confidence-giving guy, and that's a theme that I've really tried to, you know. And then he used to have, you know, it's kind of a corny saying, but it was a great saying. He used to say this when we worked for him at camp. Be the kind of coach you want your own son and daughter to play for. And you know what? I try and live by that all the time when I'm dealing with these guys. It's a, I was very, very lucky to be with him. We'll go to the last row at the end of the row. Go ahead. Uh, Jamal Murphy, CBS Play It. Coach, I wanted to get your perspective on playing a, this, you know, a team three times during the season and what particular advantage you think, you think it gives either way. Most people tend to think it gives the underdog an advantage. I sure I'm, – I'm riding that one hard, too. I'm all over that. I'm all over that. A team mass tonight, I'll be praying for that. I agree. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, as Steve said, we're familiar with each other. Um, they like to get up and down. We can't get in a racetrack with them. We're going to have to be able to rebound the ball like we did in South Bend, not in Washington, D.C. We're going to have to complete some passes and be good with the ball in the half court. Um, you know, but I, there's, there's no secrets now. And, you know, now you're just – trying to, you know, you'd love to see some guys. We need some guys to have all-time nights. Crazier stuff's happened, though, especially with our guys. We'll come up here to the front to Nicole. Nicole Arbach, USA Today. Mike, um, do you, are you one of the people that measures relative conference strength based on NCAA tournament success? You know, I'm not – I don't know. I don't know if I've really had an opinion on that. I mean uh, – uh, I can't say that I have have bragged about that, or but I guess I will this recruiting cycle. cycle now that you mention it, um, I, I'm not. You know, I I just remember the grind of the Big East, and this is the same grind with the depth of this league now. Um, and it's you know we're the sexiest league. Everybody talks about our league now and the matchups, and we had great energy in D.C. It's going to be interesting to see when we bring the show to Brooklyn. Um, but I don't know if I've really hung my hat on that, Nicole. We'll go to row three over here at the end. Jonathan? Mike, to see your players be as laid back as they were up here, and they have been this whole time, on the eve of a big game like this, is this, that something that you enjoy just as much? Oh, absolutely. And uh, hopefully they're getting it from the top. You know, I think uh, we've always gone for it and played fearlessly, and I don't want them looking over at the bench when they play. And... Um, again, it's a nucleus of guys, this nucleus here. They, they've played in a lot of NCAA tournaments now. They've played in a lot of big games, and, and they've delivered under bright lights. You know, we, we've delivered on big nights a lot, this nucleus, and certainly there's none bigger than tomorrow night. We're going to come across the room on this side of the curtain, front row. I'm Greg Logan of Newsday. Uh, you're talking about the ACC being the sexiest league now. Uh, do you feel a lot of people have spoken about how of all the expansions this one seemed to be driven more by the need to build up the basketball again do you feel that like it's done that for those big east schools who moved there built up the basketball uh, not so much the the football for the full-time members yeah I, I would think all four of us who've come over except for the guy at syracuse who probably you know he's he's a big guy big east guy through and through right Doc? but uh you know, if you got him privately off the record, it's it's been good for all of us. It really has. Um, and again, I get back to playing. You know, the the Blue Bloods, Duke and North Carolina. That you get shots at them. Um, it's great for recruiting. It's helped our Midwest recruiting. When I was in the Big East and I was recruiting kids in Indiana and Ohio, you know, oh, you're playing Georgetown. Oh, you're playing. Oh, whoa, whoa, you're playing Duke and North Carolina now. Well, maybe I'll come up the road from Indianapolis, even though I didn't get Montrose. I tried to recruit him at Duke 
he went to North, and he made a great decision. But but it's 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 been uh, those two things really you know, having those two teams and those shots at those programs have really driven driven the league and has helped all of us. We'll come back to this side of the curtain in row three. Mike Jaden Daly, Daly Dosa Hoops. When Carolina won the national championship in 09, you had played them earlier in the season in Maui, and you noticed Tyler up close and personal yeah. with his leadership and his refuse to lose mentality, and you also coached his younger brother a couple of years later after that. Do you see similar qualities in Marcus? Yeah, I think Marcus has done it. Man, is he playing, has he hit his gear right now? You know, I've, I've always, he, he's just a class act. He's what college basketball is all about. Um, and you know, it was great when he wasn't playing well, he was never panicking. He was just playing and making sure his team won. And I thought he handled that with such grace and it all comes back around full circle. Uh, but there are a lot of similarities there. Now let's be honest. I could, the hands bros are a different breed of cat, a totally different breed of cat. And I'd love to have Ben Hansbro back any day. Now I was scared of him some days. Um, but I love having that guy, and I know they'd love to have Tyler back at North Carolina. Marcus does it a little more diplomatically. We'll uh, come over here, front row, at the end of the row. Mike Brett Strelo, Fable Observer. Do you think you'll have to coach in the boot tomorrow? And have you ever had to coach with something yeah, kind of that's no, limiting I, you? Or? I never have. I mean, my I told my doc, I said I don't really want to do this, and he said, Well, we'll talk tomorrow, and you know, I'm fine. I'm you know, once the game starts, I'm moving pretty good, and. Uh, I'll do whatever, but, uh, you know, maybe I just need a seatbelt on the bench so I don't get – I got to remember, I'm not the 41-year-old guy who got the job in 2000. I, that's probably uh, – I need to sit down more. Do we have any more questions for Coach Bray? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, Coach. Breakout sessions should still be going on. They should be going until about 4.20 if you are thinking about heading up there.